Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me. This is our fifth, no, six. This is our sixth video in our series on how to take an, uh, an exploded assembly model and put it into a drawing along with the bill of materials and balloons. And uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to real briefly show you uh, just a real quick edit in our bill of materials. We're going to make an edit to our sheet and then we're going to jump right into balloons and show you some options in regard to balloons. So in regard to our, um, our bill of materials, I think I may have been clicking some of these cells and talking about something that may not have been apparent to you uh, in the video. And that is this dialog box that comes up. If you click in a cell, like uh, the cell for the lower gauge wheel arm ears, uh, for their part number, um, it brings up this dialog box, which I don't think was wholly visible to you last time. So this dialog box shows a couple different things here. Uh, there's three uh, choices. You can keep that link which means it'll maintain that parametric relationship between uh, the bill of materials and the part and uh, in regard to this one it's going to be the part number inside the configuration manager or we, we can break that link which means we can just enter whatever value we want in there and it has no uh, consequence or bearing on uh, the part itself or we can go to cancel so in this case we're going to go to cancel we're not going to change anything but I just wanted to show you that what we are going to change are a couple things down on our title block uh, these two texts seem to be exceeding their boundaries and if you see it doing something like that let's go ahead and correct, uh, correct that. If you right click and go to edit sheet format we want to go to the sheet format and we want to change some of this. So if we go over here to the properties manager go to font let's go ahead and change that. What you don't want to do is change the units and space but let's go to points and change that down. Maybe 16 see if that fits. Yep. That fits. That's really good. That just fits. I like that. And this one, over here, in regard to our file name, that's a little bit big too. Go to font, and let's uh, maybe make that down to 9. See what that looks like. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I might be a little bit too uh, too small, so let's put it up to 10. Because it looks like it's uh, smaller than some of the other text that's around it. Yeah, well, I don't know. Something else we could do is just take this on and move it over a little bit. Since we don't have that revision block uh, uh, filled in. And my gosh, I have a spelling error. Gauge is G-A-U-G-E. -E. So I'll have to go ahead and change it. And of course, when I go ahead and save my uh, my my assembly file, it'll update here in the drawing, which is nice. It's part of the parametric uh, capabilities here. So right-click. Let's go back to the edit sheet. Did our bill of materials. Did our title block. Let's put in some balloons. So here's uh, where you find the balloons. It's going to be under the annotation tab on the command manager. Let's go to balloon first, and we're going to go to auto balloon. So if we just go to balloon, what this does, it, what this does is it gives us the ability to pick parts out here and assign like a, a leader with a, um, you know, with some text to it inside of a balloon. Circular is okay. It's a single item, and just uh, as a default setting, we're going to click on that uh, that tire, which is going to be ag tire here, number twelve. And what we've chosen for it is two characters, so we can go up to two characters in that. If we made it to go to one character, I don't know. Looks like it's the same, so there we go. So there's a difference between two character and one character. Two character gives you a little bit more room. The one character gives you enough room for just one character. So let's go back to balloon again. And this time, instead of a circular two character with the item number, let's go to, scroll down a little bit, and you have a choice between a couple different uh, styles, triangular, hexagonal, box, diamond. We're going to do circular split line and put in two values in here. The first value being uh, item number, which is okay, and the second one being quantity. So that might be relevant if it's not obvious to some things here. It might be good to be able to point out like maybe one bolt and give us a total quantity of that. So let's go back to the tire and see what that looks like. So now that is uh, item number 12 on our bill of materials. You see it over here. It's our ag tire, and there's one quantity of that. And just to demonstrate that one more time, if we go to balloon, circular, split line, two character, item number, quantity, and our layer is going to be total block border. You know, it really should be the same as the other one, which is going to be sheet nuts, so it should be green. And let's pick out one of these bolts and bring that out. So that's item number 17, quantity 6. That's not bad. Again, one more time. Circular split line, two character, title block border, yeah, it's, doesn't remember us here. Sheet notes, we'll click in this one. And bring that out. And there we go, item number 13, quantity one. 
we want to change something that's on a different layer, we don't have to go in and erase and do that. Just click on that item and just go to Sheet Notes, and it puts it on that other layer. All right. Let's do Auto Balloon. And what Auto Balloon is going to allow us to do, and we can, again, adjust that layer too. We're going to put that in the Sheet Notes layer. What Auto Balloon allows us to do, and gives us a couple different options, we could do Square, we can do Circular, we could do everything on the top. Which, you know, that actually looks pretty nice. Put everything on the bottom. That doesn't look as nice, but you could always rearrange the furniture. Everything on the left, everything on the right. But uh, one nice thing about square is it uh, kind of lines it up top and bottom, or left and right, or bottom and right, or whatever the combination might be, when in order to uh, for it to have the least uh, length of a leader line as possible. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, let's scroll down and make sure we put that in our sheet notes layer. And if we kind of like the way it looks, it's going to take some editing here. We're going to go to the green check mark. What it doesn't do is it doesn't uh, provide redundancy here too. And you know that's just uh, the single um, circle here. So let's go ahead and redo that. Auto balloon. Let's make sure we pick our options here. Circular split line is what we want. Auto number quantity. And again, go back to our sheet notes layer. And let's pick the style that we like, which is going to be square. Click inside of that, it gives us a preview, and yeah, that's that's what we want. Green check mark. Now we have to go in here and rearrange the furniture a little bit. Some of this stuff you don't certainly don't want text to overlap in itself. So you notice that you do get arrows sometimes. Sometimes you get little uh, little round dots. Little round dots mean that you've actually selected uh, something that's not an edge. The arrow will actually point to an edge. So whatever you think is appropriate. So I think initially it starts out with an edge, but you can make it a, make it a dot by just clicking inside of that area. And I'm not going to bore you with uh, rearranging the furniture and all these items. But so we'll maintain the edge in that one because that looks a little bit better. Something like this might be a little bit more appropriate to put in the middle so it defines a much broader area rather than just an edge. So our, let's see, number 9 is going to be our wheel base, which is an item in the background. It's a, kind of the hub that's in the background there. So we might want to clarify that a little bit and maybe show some hidden lines in there. It doesn't give us a wheel, the tire twice. Now it does give this item over here, which is our first item in here, and it gives us that item as uh, the lower gauge uh, wheel arm. We only have one in here, but apparently there might be another one nested in the, the assembly. Maybe it's suppressed. That's a little bit uh, deceiving uh, in a way, but you can change it. It's hard to change that here. If you're to double click on that number two and make that one, it goes back to two. A little irritating there. But you can go over here to the quantity in the table and change the value here and make that one and uh, even though it looks like it tur turned orange if you just click on the outside orange means it's been selected it, it'll change that quantity now that kind of overwrites the quantity in uh, the bill of materials it doesn't necessarily overwrite the quantity that's in the assembly so you have to be careful about that now when you rearrange the furniture you notice that it's hard to see but you do see some uh, some lines here that will help you align things Go ahead and take advantage of that. I'm going to take my uh, balloons and kind of move them off the border a little bit. Don't necessarily want to move my uh, my object or my assembly out, but those things will kind of snap to uh, some sort of coordinated uh, alignment in a way. So there you have it, and it needs a little bit more alignment over there too. It isn't quite perfect, but I think you have the idea. That's how you do balloons, that's how you make modifications to it, and that's pretty much how you put in an assembly in a, an exploded format with the bill of materials and balloons associated with it. And that's what it kind of looks like when it's all done, which I think is very attractive. So thanks for joining me. Please join me for other videos.